establish easy. Hi, I want to talk to you about graph search and how do you actually search a graph. So the scenario is that we have a graph right here. So remember a graph is just a bunch of nodes and lines connecting them. Where we have, in this case, we have two nodes right here, one of which I'm going to call S and one of them I'm going to call T. And what we want to do is we want to go from S to T along the edges. And there's a lot of different things that we can consider, such as the most varied path, the, the shortest path. So we're going to actually sh look at the shortest path here. So the minimum number of edges, we're going to assume that we want to find the minimum number of edges here first. And what we want to do is to find the minimum number of edges in order to reach T from S, starting at S and going to T. And obviously, we don't want to repeat edges because if we repeat an edge, that means we went around and we ended up at the same place and that is not very good. So how do we actually get from S to T? Well, let's look at this graph right here. So we got S right here and note that there's really only one way we can go. There's only one edge connected to S. So let's, let's take that one. So we're definitely taking that one. All right, well, the problem is right here at this node, whatever it is, we have three different possibilities of which way to go. And it pretty, just by staring at the picture, it, it's pretty obvious that we don't want to take that one because when we come back here, we could have just went down that edge and we ended up at that vertex. So we went there in one edge versus two over here. The thing is that I want to be as agnostic about the graph as possible. I don't want to know anything about the graph whatsoever. So it could be that going along this route is the best route. I have absolutely no clue in advance what it's going to be. If I knew what it was, I wouldn't be searching the graph in the first place. So what can we do? What we can do is let's go from this vertex right here, every possible direction in one edge. So one edge in every direction. Let's look at every single one of them. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a different color here. So pink is going to be the second edge I pick. So I could go along any one of those two. Now what we can do is, of course, from any one of these three, I could choose any one of them in principle which way I can go, which one's the fastest route. Well, it could be here. We know it's not going to be, but it, it could be here. It could be here. It could be here. So what we can do is from each one of these three, explore the graph one edge out yet again. And let's not repeat a vertex we've ever seen. So if we've seen a vertex before, don't consider it ever again. So what we can do here is let's look at this node right here. Well, clearly the only way we can go without repeating an edge, we've already taken that edge because we colored it pink. If we take this edge right here, then we've already seen this vertex because this pink edge already connected to it. So we can consider this if we wanted to. I'm going to color it green for the third edge that we pick. But here, I'm not going to progress any further because uh, there's no point because this edge is our, this vertex has already been seen. So if we've seen a vertex, we're not going to look at it ever again, which is kind of cool. Well, here, let's look at this vertex. Oops. Let's look at this vertex. Well, here, there's only one way we can go. We, we already selected that edge, so we're not going to pick it again. So let's look at that edge. So I'm going to pick that edge. And we've not seen that vertex yet, so that's fine. Well, here, this edge right here, if we pick this, we've already seen that vertex. So I'm going to consider the edge, but I'm not going to add the last vertex right here. Okay, well, we only really have one vertex that we need to consider right now, which is this guy right here. So let's use a different color. Let's do yellow. And let's explore one level out this time. So if we explore one level out, we get to these two vertices right here. So this one is dead in the water. It can't do anything else. Well, this one right here uh, can go both ways. So let's go ahead and put both of those edges in. And since we've never seen those vertices before, let's add them to the collection of things we've seen. And oh look, we've seen T now. So how do we reach T? Well, we had some choice of edges that we picked in order to reach T from S. 
well, what are the ways that we could have went? Well, clearly, this path is the wrong one because we went this way and this vertex was already was already seen by some other path that we had before. And so therefore, this going this way is not the fastest route by definition. So then now let's look at this guy. Well, how did we reach T? Well, we reached T definitely from this guy. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to label all the vertices. So I'm going to give a name to every one of them. So I'm going to call that vertex 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The, the, there's no particular order into these, but I'm just giving a name to the vertices. Well, we definitely reach T from 7. That's, that's the vertex that, that got to us. So 7 reached T. And I'll, I'll draw it this way. Even though it's not a directed graph, I'm just showing the order of the, the edges and the vertices that was taken. Well, how did we reach 7? Well, we didn't reach it from 8. We reached it from 6. So 6 went to 7. Well, then how did we get from 6? Well, 7 didn't go to 6 because that would create a cycle and we're not considering cycles here. We didn't go from 5 because we didn't, but mainly because 5 is only connected to 6, so we couldn't have went from 5 because it's not S and it's the only thing connected. So we must have went from either 4 or 3. And so both of those are possible. So 4 or 3 could have went to 6. We, we don't know which one necessarily because it depends on the which order we selected the, the vertices here. We just happened to pick three here. Um, but since four, three, and one are exactly the same relative to S in terms of distance, it doesn't actually matter which one we, we picked here. So therefore, four and three are the same relative to T because they take the same number of edges to get to T and they're the same number of edges from S, so we could have chosen either one of them. Well, how did we get from, let's say, 3? Well, we could have came from 1, but we noticed that that was the suboptimal way, and so therefore the 2 vertex is how we got to 3. So we went from 2 to 3, and how did we get to 4? Well, 2 went to 4, because that's the only other vertex connected to it. And how do we get to how do we get to two? Well, one couldn't have gone to two because that's in the suboptimal route. And so S is the only way we could have went to two from there because it's the only other thing that's connected to it and doesn't create a cycle. So we actually have two shortest ways we could have went from S to T, which are going from S to two and then making a choice as to whether to go to three or four and then converging on, on six, and then going to seven and then to T. So it's, it's unique here, and it's unique at the beginning, but there's a choice right here. So what we're doing here is what is called breadth first search. So the way that breadth first search works is you start at the start vertex, you go one edge out, and then two edges out, and then three edges out, and consider every single vertex that's reachable in one edge, in two edges, in three edges, and all the way through the rest of the graph. It might not be possible to reach T in case that T is in a different connected component than S, then it's just not reachable at all. And that's totally possible. So here we determine that S is reachable to T, but the shortest path is of length one, two, three, four, five edges. And there happen to be, in this case, two unique paths of length 5 to get from S to T. But of course, in any other graph, there might, be, there might be some other ways of getting from S to T. So how does this actually work as an algorithm? Well, I'm going to draw a picture. And this is not actually what the algorithm actually does. But it's a good idea of what the algorithm does actually do. But it's not actually what it does. So what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to zoom in. That's not what the algorithm does. And I'm going to make a little circle around S. So this is the set of vertices that I need to consider. So S is the only vertex I need to consider right now. And now I need to look at all of the vertices that are one edge away from S, which happens to only be two in this case. So I'm going to delete that little circle and then make that that little circle. <laughs> so then now what I'm gonna do is 
I'm going to look at every single vertex in any of the circled vertices. Well, there's only one circled vertex here. And there are three vertices that are connected to two. So I'm going to circle all three of those. And then now what we need to do is to observe one of those three vertices. Okay, well, let's look at this one vertex right here. And it doesn't actually matter which one we pick, but here, let's just pick one. So if we pick one, then we look at all of the neighbors of one that haven't been picked yet. So what we actually should do is I'm going to, in yellow, I'm going to circle in yellow the vertices that I have seen before. And blue, we have seen before, but it's not ones that I'm currently considering. It's ones I've considered before. One vertex right here is now we're going to consider it. And now I'm not going to uh, consider it anymore because it's pointing, this only other edge is connected to a blue vertex right here. And so we can't actually explore or add any blue vertices into our consideration anymore. So I'm going to make one a yellow vertex now. Okay, now on to one of the other two vertices. Well, we could pick either one. It doesn't actually matter which one we pick, but I'm going to pick, let's say, four. So I'm going to pick four. And then what we're going to do is explore every single uh, neighbor of four, which happen to be two and six here. Well, two is a yellow vertex, so we're not going to consider it. So then six is not blue or yellow. So I'm going to make it blue because I haven't considered it yet. And those are the only possible neighbors of four. Then we're going to look at three here. Well, three is blue so therefore we need to consider all of the neighbors of three which are one but that's a yellow vertex and six and two so two is a yellow vertex and six is a blue vertex so we don't need to explore anymore so i'm going to uh, make three yellow now we need to look at six because it's blue now we need to look at all the vertices that are connected to it, which are three, four, five, and seven. This is a popular vertex. So three is yellow, so we're not gonna consider it. Four is yellow, we're not gonna consider it. Five is not blue or yellow, so I'm gonna make this, I'm gonna make five blue and seven also blue. Okay, well then now let's see. Let's suppose that we pick seven, okay? So let's, uh, actually I need to make six yellow also. So then now we're going to pick seven, let's say. I could have picked five, but let's just say we picked seven. So seven here, well, what we need to do is to consider every vertex that is connected to it. Well, here it's connected to A and T. So I'm going to make those blue. And look, we saw T. And so therefore, we could just stop right there if we wanted to, because we found the, the destination that we needed to, which is pretty dang cool. Okay, so that is a tutorial on how to search a graph. So how do you implement breadth first search? What you do is you create a queue. So remember, a queue is a data structure where you can take things off of the, in the camera is this way. So I gotta take things off the front and put things on the end. Well, whenever I, whenever I start, I'm gonna put S into the queue. And then whenever I'm going to consider our vertex, I got to take the first thing off of the front of the queue. At the beginning, that's only S because that's the only thing in the queue. Well, then what we need to do then is when we are considering whether to add a vertex to make it blue or not, what we need to do then is to see, have we seen this vertex before? And if it is already a blue or a yellow vertex, I'm not going to add it to the queue. But if it's not colored at all, I'm going to add it to the queue. So I'm not going to explore it right now, but I'm going to consider it later. When all of the currently blue vertices are done, then I'm going to consider the one I just added. So that's why we're able to explore the graph one level at a time. I, I call it onion layers because it kind of is like an onion layer. We start at the very core and then work our way out to the first in inner layer, and then second inner layer, third inner layer, and then work our way out to the surface as far as we can possibly go. And what is the runtime of this algorithm? Well, think about what we're doing here. Well, we're always adding things to a queue. So the runtime of adding or deleting things from a queue is constant time. So that's not really anything to consider. So every vertex is gonna be added into the queue, 
or removed from the queue or not considered at all in case that we can't reach that vertex. So therefore, the number of operations per vertex is going to be a constant number, either add it to the queue or not add it to the queue or potentially not consider it, but is at most two operations per vertex. What is the cost of looking up the neighbors of a vertex right here? Well, you can do that in constant time for each of the neighbors. So for each neighbor, I'm going to have a constant runtime because of the data structure we can use. So we can use, for example, we can use an adjacency list, for example. That's one way that we can go. So if we use an adjacency list, we can look up the neighbors of a vertex in constant time. And so we're only going to consider every edge at most one time. So since every edge is going to be considered at most once and every vertex at most a constant number, therefore the runtime of breadth first search is linear in the size of the graph. And to be more specific, it is big O of the number of vertices plus the number of edges, whatever that number is. So it's going to be some number times this. And if you don't know what big O actually means, look at the link in the video description. I have a video all about big O downstairs. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave comments down below about breadth for search and graph search in general. As always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. That was easy. That was easy. That was easy.